welcome everyone. Um, what we're going to show you today is how we support um, staff and students at AUT in the use of Mahara. And we're going to do it straight from Mahara. We've set up a collection page. So the, what we've got here is just to show you some facts and figures about AUT. I won't go through all of, all of it, but the most important one that I'd like to show you is this one in the Mahara section about the number of accounts that have increased from 2010 to 2014. Okay, so we've seen a, a large increase in that area. And also within the last week we've had the number of logins have been 379, even though students have been on holiday, and 43,000 pages in the current system. So since 2008 it's been widely used. Okay. And, sorry I'll just go back to that one for a minute, and we cover three campuses. We have our city campus which you're at at the moment, we have our North Shore campus, which is at Akaranga, and we also have a South campus, which is in, in Manukau. We have a team of six people um, in the Centre for Learning and Teaching, and we all support Mahara. Okay, so how do we support Mahara? We have a number of ways that we do it. We have, on our help page, we have documents and videos that we share with students. We have... Um, something called a latte. Now it's not a coffee, as most of you will think, but it is something to, to actually get around and you know, be there. Our lattes, or learning and teaching technology enablers, are postgraduate students that we've employed during their schooling to help us create things for either Mahara, um, for maybe Blackboard that we use. Lattes, we've asked them to, as a student, log into Mahara, and we want them to create pages Sorry. that are what demonstration the pages. The so we've asked them to experience as, as a student, and we've asked them to Passport. create pages Passport or directions or instructions on how to do the different things in Mahara. Is it the same, same as this one? Speakers. For the other one. For the uh, other one of the main things that we got them to do was the Google page or the Google Maps. So we've got Google Maps, Google Calendar. And also instructions on how to do it. Okay, so in, in student in student terms, in student directions, this is how we do it. So they've done something on Google Docs. Collections. And we ask them to put a collection together of also basic pages, samples, intermediate levels expert templates, and I can show you those um, at the break, I won't go into too much detail, but we employed them to do it as a student, to see how it yeah. works. And uh, um, just to add on a little bit more, um, that um, we, we're trying to, there are help documents, like if there is a little question mark, you could put instructions there, but what, the way how we look at is um, we want the student to see how they want the page to look like for a start, and then from then, if you choose, oh, this looks good and I want to use it, then you know the instruction to follow. So this is where we're coming from in terms of... Um, it's at the moment or in English. <laughs> but certainly we can look at different languages to do it. Let's get this bit right. <laughs> okay, so we, as I say, we employ these uh, learning and teaching technology students to help us put this together. So those pages are copyable and uh, common across the whole institution? No. Uh, it's not copyable, it's viewable. Oh, viewable, yeah. okay. But just give students an idea of how to how to set the pages out. For example, a basic page. Right. So they put in their images. They put in uh, text boxes. Just to give the students an example of how things might look. Okay. Working with lecturers and students. Lecturers, when they first come to use Mahara, or we we show them how to use it, we ask them to set up their own page for the professional development which is what we've seen over the last couple of days, so that they get an idea of how it's, how it's used by the student, get the feel of it, and also as a resource for them for later on. We also create templates, or we encourage the lecturers to create templates, um, and we can show you a couple of examples very shortly. We do first-time user training for staff and for students, and we use something called an activity sheet, which helps us when we go in to do the training. We go through this activity sheet with the lecturer first 
to give them an idea of what we want the students to actually do or the activities that we want them to do. So we go through this and we edit it with a lecturer. And these are the four areas that we get the students to do. But we'll certainly sit down and um, get the lecturers to add their bits to it if they want to. Yes, so for example, some, stu some lecturers would like the students to use journals, so we would um, add some information about how to use journals in um, the page. Or if some stu lecturers prefer um, students to share their pages rather than submit, then um, the task will be slightly different. And so what we get them to do is have a look at when we're teaching them how to do the different areas, we get them to how to submit their portfolio and get them to review their answer underneath to make sure that they're all on the right track. So you'll see, give them direction on where to go, where to go to create your portfolio. So that um, it also helps with our uh, training that um, we don't have to go through each task um, during the training session while um, get the student to try, get their hands dirty themselves and then we could focus on hints and tips um, during the session. It's like a more inspiring for the students. Okay, so is it very hard for students? There are a lot of students coming from high school who are other worlds, but they have access to this technology anyway. Is it hard? No, it's not. No, no. We do when we do student training, yeah. um, we find that possibly 80, 90 percent of students are like that. Yeah. They can pick it up straight away. Yeah. Maybe the odd one or two that you need to do perhaps a little bit with one on one with. Yeah. Um, but most of the majority of students pick it up very, very easily. And schools are using similar programs, platforms, those sorts of ideas. So it isn't specifically an innovation when you get to university, this idea, is it? That's right. Yeah. There's a small trickle of students in our experience with who already have an e-portfolio or my portfolio school. Right. Um, and so that creates some other problems because if you're actually using my portfolio school and you've got a like you've got a university institution, you know, can't actually easily shift that uh, from their school to your institution. Yep. So there's some choices there. That have to be made. I would just like to add to that is that most students that we've discovered, um, for example, NET as well, I've worked with you in is that the students don't find it actually that difficult to pick up Mahara. What they find difficult with Mahara is why they're using it. Okay. So it's not the technical problem. No, it's not a technical problem. It's why should we do it? Yes. Yeah. It's a, pe it's a pedagogical, pedagogical problem. So they always ask, what, ask us the lecturers, why, why are we doing this? Why do we have to do it? Mm. And um, just to pick up, sorry, Lisa, yep. uh, one more time, but the real selling point for me is that you've got made it available to them after they move to the UT. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a lot of purpose to it. I think yep. opening the end or that end has really made the purpose much more meaningful. Yeah, and it actually shifts the student's view of Mahara, yeah. how they're going to use it from the very beginning. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I'll get Shannon to show you some examples of some of our portfolios that we were able to um, share. Right. We've got so permission to use. We have um, created um, a group of uh, examples of each portfolio. It hasn't been made available for um, um, everyone yet, but it's just still a uh, work in prog progress. And I will just, so the reason why we want to um, create this um, resource is because um, we find student um, well, the motivation, and we want to get students to see, okay, this is what you can possibly do in Mahara. Um, and uh, Jiao Wei, um, our uh, team member, has, um, has been very creative and made um, most of the pages here. And I'll just show, um, share some of them with you. So this is one page that he has quickly done. So it's more of um, the page layout, that this is um, the design that you could have for a page. And uh, if we also have a look at the landscape, and this is how you could possibly use the garage, the image, gara um, <coughs> image gallery, okay? And uh, also this is quite interesting. So most of the, because when, when you drag an image icon item on the block, on the page, you by default has a name called image. And some students just focus on the picture itself and leave it as a default. And this is how the page would look like over here. While over this side, 
when you delete the title, it actually looks a lot more impressive. So this is the difference, little difference that you could tweak, uh, you could make for your page to make it look a lot better. So this is um, what we're trying to do to encourage students to kind of have um, have the opportunity to have a play and see the difference, see the po um, possibilities. Okay, um, and uh, our. And also, we have been doing quite a bit of um, plugin development. Um, we have just recently released our uh, group image display plugin. And the page, actually, I showed you before, examples of ePortfolio. This is the home page of a normal um, group, but um, with our uh, group display um, plugin added on. So it made the page looking quite impressive, I hope. Um, and we'll be um, showing more how we developed and uh, the reason behind it in the afternoon with the session um, Jiao and I will be doing. Okay. Um, and uh, the other plugin, which originally developed by Catalyst IT, called Grouping Script, basically um, brings the um, the group of students from our uh, AUT online learning system to the Blackboard learning system um, to Mahara. So lectures have their courses, the group of students set up within the group um, automatically so um, that um, you don't need to manually. Um, it's just a, a take away, go Mahara. You want to create a um, group in Mahara for this um, course? Yes, tick, and it's been done. Okay, so um, please, please feel free to um, grab us and uh, um, we are more than happy to share more with you um, about this plugin development. Okay, and uh, next I would like to, we would like to sh showcase some pages. Um, this morning Lisa and I um, was chatting with Christina. What we find um, the presentations comparing to last year this year's presentation has a lot more um, showing students' work, and uh, it feels like uh, we are more interested in looking at students' work in more details now, and we are. Um, f um, our team has been really looking into more details and uh, would like to explore more and share more with, um, with um, um, the um, people here. So what I'm, um, before I, I'm going to show the pages, um, first of all, I want to um, express my big thanks to all the lecturers and students who shared the pages with us and uh, allowing us to present it at Mahara Hui and uh, um, get inspired by their work. Um, as you can see on the screen, there are three groups of uh, examples that we will be looking at. The first two groups are the students' work um, from two different cohorts. Um, who uses templates. So we will be looking these two um, together and then I'll show this one later. Okay, so the, the students work from example one are uh, the students who um, were given a template to create a, their page about their dreaming job, dream job. And I'll just quickly go over the requirements for the, the page. So what they need to do on the page is um, reflect on how technology trends discussed in this paper relate to your dream job. Um, the second um, requirement is read trade publications which w w that would become part of your reading in a dream job. And the third one is academic research about one technology. So those are the three requirements the student need to um, work on on the page. So you can see this student, um, the dream job is event manager. So there is a bit of um, um, description about what an event manage do for um, day to day. And then the first column, techlo uh, technology one, technology two, technology three. And then the second column, the student talks about the reading readings, three readings, and uh, in the third column, the academic reading, okay? And uh, I'll just leave this tab on, and let's look at the student work 
toe. So, yes? Can I just um, mm. comment on that one? One of the issues with Mahara is what you just did just there was that scrolling down, down, down for column one, yeah. and then down, down, down column two, and then down, down, down. Yeah. Are there other options? Like, can you yes, add you three columns across in one section or something because it does mm. get very clunky? There has been a bit of um, improvement already on okay. this column design that you can design more complicated page layouts. Yeah. Mm. But it's still based on, yeah, it's, it's ba um, you can design different columns, um, define different numbers of um, columns you can have for a row. Okay, so there are a bit of a flexibility there, but this is what um, the template was look like. And so the student just yes, kind of pretty much followed the pattern and did it this. Um, what I would like you to do actually is to join me with this exploring um, of the student's work and see what you can see. And uh, let's do a bit of um, reflect, reflection on, um, on the student work. It's not so much of um, going into details um, of the page, but I think uh, for us more, la more of the the page um, design and uh, layout. Okay, so, okay, I think this is the second page and it's pretty much three columns as well and uh, in a similar kind of uh, format. So technology one column, reading two column and uh, the academic reading uh, the third column. Um, this student had made the middle column a little bit wider. Okay, and uh, the third page, very similar layout. Okay, and uh, I think, yeah, the, f the fourth one is kind of similar as well. Okay, and it has a little video here. Okay, and uh, the second group of students work, um, they were given a set of uh, templates by the lecturer to, um, to describe, uh, uh, to study uh, an event of their own, um, own choice. And um, they were required to um, do, um, to complete the page um, um, for their three ass assessments. Okay, so this is the first student's page. Um, the student decided to, work, to look at the Chinese Lantern Festival, so a big, um, nice picture of the students, the, the Lantern Festival, and a little bit of the student's um, information and a story about Chinese Lantern Festival, a big bit of background, and uh, assignment one here, assignment two, and assignment three. Okay, so that's a slightly more interesting layout. Okay. Um. Just because I saw on that assignment there was a list of references, have we solved the APA format for the second line of APA reference that was indented? That's a real challenge for students at the time. Well, I will follow it up with Christina. Um, okay, uh, the, anyway, the only way I've ever yeah. found to do anything with that is actually to mess with the HTML. Yeah. Okay. It's like, well, that's off the thing. Oh, sorry. I've seen that as well. Yeah. yeah. A reference app might be really useful. Like, all the references in here, it'll format yeah. them because we yeah. ask the students to do it and then the software won't let them and they're going, hang on. Yeah. Let's catch up. Okay. okay. Stephen, I'll talk to you yeah. about that. So, this is the second student's um, work. A bit of um, introduction about the student and uh, a bit of um, description of the about the yoga festival that he's she's chosen to um, work on. And assignment here, okay. And uh, this third student's work. Okay. In theory, it should, should have a um, video showing here. But that's a little bit about student and a little bit about the, the name show and uh, a YouTube video um, should be showing here. And uh, assignment one, followed by assignment two, and uh, assignment three at the bottom. Okay, so this student has a quite a bit of writing 
on the page. Right, so can I get you to tell me what do you see? What do you see um, something that you, you pick up from showing, looking at all the students' work? Is there differences between example one and example two that you can see? Yes, so. Those students. Right, okay. Um, <laughs> what, what, I, what we think that um, if you look at the group one students, their page layout pretty much quite similar. But with the second group of students, they have a reasonably dynamic page layout. This is the second group. So, because we don't really teach the students stuff yeah, about page layout, do we? Mm. Not, not as such. Not as such. No. no. But if you're given a if you're given a template, they sort mm. of the first group of students that we saw stuck to that template, and we're right. only given the one template, the one option right. to do it. But the second group of students were given three different templates, oh, so they right. could choose. They were yeah. given that option to choose what sure. they wanted and to be able to set it out a bit better. Mm. Yeah. So when, yeah, when you say when you um, given three tem different templates, you, you get the choice to choose what you like. Say for example, um, one of the students' work, he's, he's got a, a lot of writing, so he decided just use one big column so that it fits kind of long writing better rather than um, using a very small column that um, keeps the page so long. And uh, um, just imagine, I think, if, if you, if you um, look at, like if you've done your assignment and you go and look at your peers' assignment and you go, wow, your page looks so different from mine. And uh, I think if you have this kind of um, um, thinking, you have that kind of comparison, students are more likely to start to explore the possibilities. What can I do to improve my page and to make it more impressive? Um, it's, the content is important, and uh, I think, I believe, um, presentation of the page is also important as well as, although it's never is um, part of the assessments, never is required you get you get points because your page looks nice. But um, it is a motivation for the students to explore more, use Mahara more interestingly. Yeah? So, uh, <coughs> thank you for that. I'm uh, very interested in this particular question of page design. Because I, in looking at both sets, I would have said that the students are actually tending to design static pages. They're, they're not dynamic in the sense that they could be uh, if they were interacting with uh, their tutors and their peers uh, in terms of work presentation. So, for example, is <coughs> and, and this is where I think the, this is the difference between the academic requirement for display in Mahara compared to Mahara as uh, a professional networking tool. So none, none of the examples had student forums. Um, and in fact, I've noticed acro across the whole of the hui, or numerous hui, very few use journals in the way that journals can uh, completely change page layout. Now, journals are a very clunky way uh, of getting your images up, but once they're in the journal, you, you can just, and, and of course the journal then becomes its own blog. Absolutely. Uh, and you can, yeah. can feed out into any other uh, site where students. Um, just on that point, we, um, we had the midwifery department come on board with Mahara, where I've taught them how to use it in the last sort of six months. They started the sixth semester last year. And part of their requirement is actually to do a journal. The students have to do journals. So we've also taught them how to put journals in. Yeah. So I can show you, um, I've got permission to show some examples. So if you want to catch me at, at lunch, I can show you some of those. But definitely, yeah, I'll take up that point. 
Um, but they use it quite a bit in their in their pages. Yeah, I think I think journaling is the, perhaps the potentially most powerful mechanism uh, <coughs> in Mahara. But it's the, it's the underused one because they, all students sort of start, you know, doing page layout instead of thinking. Yeah, why 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 am I doing this and, and what should I be per, you know perceiving across? Yeah. Absolutely. Where's yeah. the way that Mahara um, can be used so that the pages can talk to each other? Can you, can you click on to go to somebody else's page? They have to share it with you. Yeah. And then? But you have to, but come, you have to go back to the you, dashboard. You have yeah. to come in and out. So mm -hmm. is there a sense that connectivity at the, at the cold front would, would also mean that you could uh, go to this person's work if you want to find out more about these things, well, this person over there? Did, did you go to see um, Massimo's? No, yeah, Stephen wasn't here Blackboard. yesterday. Mm -hmm. What he did was in Blackboard, he put up a page yeah. Yeah. where he link, he didn't use the secret URL, he put a link in there so that every student's page was on one PDF page. So the students could just have that ability to quickly click between and see what all the other students have done. And so that's, that's a fanning out, but I'm sick of the interconnectivity yeah. as well. That's a picture, I guess. That's what we can do at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. The main problem with that is that is, um, because pages are private to a person and um, to, to be able to link to a different page, the page has to be shared with the person in the group. The, the permissioning of uh, pages is what causes that to be a real problem. Uh, is that you can't share a page with someone unless that person has permission to view the page. So if, for example, you go to a page, uh, they've got a link to a different page, Right. Um, just sorry, um, Jawai. I just want to quickly button. This is actually a good example. Um, talking about page sharing. So this um, student's work I want to show here is basically the student. This is student. Um, this is a pediatric student's profile page. So within Mahara, the profile page is available for everyone, and she actually made an um, effort actually creating a quite impressive profile page. Um, this is just a little bit about me and uh, all what is required for her um, work as part of her assessment. The, the pediatric, this student was introduced to Mahara at year two and uh, so those, those ones, those pages are the ones relevant being marked as a part of the assessment but the rest of the pages are all the students own that's what she wanted to do. Okay, so what she has done over the years that she's studying using Mahara, she has created for each, each condition a page and information about the condition, about, um, about all about this. So I've counted, it's more than 100 pages in her Mahara portfolio and uh, I, I really, really, I know we're running out of time, but um, what I want to share, a, a quotation from her is, Mahara has been very valuable for my study, and in my third year was excellent for being able to review conditions before my final practice assessment, where we were given a patient to assess who could have anything wrong with them. I have started to use Mahara for my honors year to have somewhere else to put a copy of everything and to review information when I get asked to, but, um, why someone someone's foot hurts in a certain place. I think once I have a leave and begin practicing in the real world, it will be a very valuable asset to have all this information at my fingertip. So this is a really good example that student actually continued using Mahara, and I believe she, she would be using it for quite a while. Okay, right. So, so we've been given the nod to say that we're running out of time. So what's next for us? Um, work more closely with lecturers to support students. Okay, um, our biggest user of the ePortfolio of Mahara is, is early childhood. We've got podiatry as Shen's um, brought up. We've got midwifery. We have education. education. Language. Languages. And we're also looking at this year, uh, rolling it out to the, possibly the paramedics for their record of learning for their students. Okay. Yeah. 
and uh, wanting to be more active um, in the Mahara community. So we see ourselves the role as a bridge between lectures and uh, the techno technology side of it, developing um, of Mahara. And hopefully we will, um, yeah, um, be will be um, a valuable asset within this big community. Thank you very much. Thank you.